Good morning. What a privilege to share the word with you. We are entering a whole new season as a church. We are kicking off with new cell groups, fresh youth groups, fresh working youth groups. And um, yeah, I, th I think the congregation that has been attending services were amazed at what happened in the past two weeks just with the te teenagers. To see them grow from, from 15 to 26 in one week and uh, creating for us all sorts of administrative problems that are fun, that are part of our design for the future. So I want to thank you for listening this morning. I want to talk to you about the reality that smaller is actually bigger. Um, people are building mega churches. And in those mega churches, it often is a case that the individual gets lost, that, that, that my specific emotional needs are never addressed. I'm being fed beautiful information. I'm being fed um, truths from the word. And, and, and we have remarkable worship. But I as a person can get lost in the crowd. And so I want to share with you this morning from two very potent scriptures, um, actually three, but two that is remarkable. It's Exodus chapter 18. If you have your Bible with, with you, please turn there so long. Exodus 18 and Luke chapter 9. I'm blessed to be in your home. May you as a family and you as, a, as, a, a, as an onlooker to this program, may God use you this morning in your heart, turn you to... to be with us in the vision that we share. Smaller is bigger. So um, Moses has this crowd of Jewish people, this, the Hebrew people that he led from Egypt on their way to Canaan. And, and Moses is married. He's got two children. And um, Moses works from morning till night, counseling, being involved in the needs of the crowd. And so the huge crowd is swallowing him in. And then his father-in-law, Jethro, came to him and, and, and observed what Moses was doing. And then he said to Moses, Moses, the thing that you're doing is not right. Moses said to him, what do you mean, sir? He says, he says and I want to read to you from Exodus 18, 20, 21. You shall choose out of all the people around you able men, such as fear God, men of truth, having no covetousness, place such over these people. In other words, I'm challenging you to start a whole new infrastructure, to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. In other words, you're going to divide this crowd into smaller groups. The biggest group will be a thousand. And at this moment, there could be anything between 600,000 and a million people. He says, some men are capable of leading a thousand. There are other men that are only capable of leading a hundred. Other men only 50. Other men 20 and other men 10. So according to the, the knowledge you have of these people, you can appoint them over groups. And, you, and, and what is happening here is ministry is multiplied. Let them judge the people at all seasons. It shall be that every great matter they shall bring to you, Moses. But every small matter they shall judge. So it shall be easier for yourself. And they shall bear the burden with you. These group leaders that you appoint will be co-workers together with you. If you shall do this thing, and God, I believe, Jethro said, God is behind this whole thing and, and God is urging you to do this then you shall be able to endure and all these people shall live in peace. <laughs> because I don't know if you found it. Let me just take a swim. But if you go for counseling and the person that you're with is hard pressed for time and, and people are waiting at the door, it's as if you are not important, as if your needs are not really important and as if your troubles are not met. And so by dividing the crowd of the Hebrew people into smaller groups, Moses multiplied ministry because able men were able to carry the burden for the people with him. The second scripture I want to take you to is in Luke chapter 9, verse 14. <coughs> Excuse me. Luke chapter 9, verse 14. 
excuse me, I, I'm saying meeting needs is multiplied. Ministry is multiplied, point number one. Point number two, the, the way in which, which we meet needs, the effectiveness of meeting needs is multiplied. In Luke chapter 9, again, there's a huge crowd following Jesus. And, and, and Jesus looked around and there were about 5,000 men. Now, uh, the, the biblical, biblical revelation is written in a, in a patriarchal um, context. And so it's possible that he's calling the men and he's not counting the women and the children. We could assume that there were between 12 and 15,000 people in this meeting. So there were about 5,000 men and he said to his disciples, make them sit down by 50s in companies. The, the Roman uh, soldiers fought in companies of 50. So this is, this is a very important figure. This is a, an, uh, it talks about effectiveness. It talks about uh, slankrach. We have the ability to to uh, multiply our needs being met. And the, the provision for our needs is being multiplied. Look at this. It's a total miracle. And they did so and made them sit down. And then he took five loaves, five loaves, two fishes. Looking up to heaven, he thanked his father, blessed the fishes, blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to the disciples. <sighs> We don't have time to stand at this miracle, but I let me just say to you, five loaves and two fishes, 15,000 people. The mathematics don't work. Jesus blessed it. He held it in his hand. He blessed it, handed it over to his disciples. And I'm sure as the disciples started sharing with the crowd, a miracle was happening in their hands. I want to say to you, number one, God wants to multiply ministry. And now that he has a, a lot of ministers around Jesus, the, the miracle has already happened. Jesus doesn't have to do it all. As this miracle deploys in front of our eyes, the, the needs are being met in a multiplied fashion. Gave it to the disciples to set before the multitude and they did eat. The multitude did eat. There was enough for everybody. And all were filled. And there was taken up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets. 12 again is a very biblical number. Are you with me? There's such a, a miracle pertained in the scripture that the needs of all the people were being met by five loaves and two fishes. And by 12 men, the multiplication of the ministry of Jesus the multiplication of the individual's ministry shows us that the, that the needs are being met in a, in a multiplied and a more effective way. I'm going to take you to a very prominent scripture in my heart. All, the, all these years, this thing has really sat here. It's in, in 1 Samuel chapter 18. David has just slain Goliath. And J David is a young boy. And the king has a son called Jonathan. And, and the son is to be the heir of the kingdom. But, but the king Saul called David to be in his house. And so Jonathan and David are standing before the king. And the king is looking at David and he's, he, he just recognizes the hand of God. Because Saul was a man of God until a certain phase in his life. And he recognizes the hand of God on this man. And, and he says to, to uh, David, you're not going back to your family. I want you to stay here. Because uh, uh, Saul sees the gift of God to the nation. Multiplying of Saul's ministry. And then a miracle happens. And it says, let me read it to you. When David had finished speaking with Saul, Jonathan was bound to David in close friendship and loved him as much as he loved himself. A miracle happens in the son of the king's heart. And he felt himself being drawn toward David and, and they cut covenant with each other. Now normally there are eight steps, seven, eight steps in the cutting of a covenant it was a very important ritual. 
But I, let me read the phases of this covenant. Number one, Jonathan the king's son took off his cloak, the cloak that defined him as son of the king. And he put it on the shoulders of David. In that moment, David is being identified as a son of the king. Then he took his belt that held all his, his weapons in position and he handed his belt over to David. And so David, that had a slingshot, is suddenly equipped with, with a sword and with a short knife and, and all these things. And then they cut covenant. In other words, they cut their wrists and let their blood mingle. And so they became one in the flesh. That's the sign of cutting of covenant. And then Jonathan gave David the right hand. The right hand uh, symbolizes authority handed over to you. Then they exchanged their names. You see, what happens when we get married, we exchange names. And so David is now <laughs> David Jonathan. And, and, and then they read the rules of this covenant. If you keep this covenant, this and this and this will happen. But if you break this covenant, this and this and this will be your portion. And then they have a meal together. We have a covenantal meal when we do communion. We share the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our covenant with Jesus. But here Jonathan and David eat a covenant meal. And then they do something incredible. They plant a tree. 30 years later, this tree will be huge. Symbolizing the growth of our covenant with each other. Symbolizing the, 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 the powerful relationship we have with each other. But also, when Jesus went to the cross, God had planted a tree in the garden for our salvation. And this tree was the symbol of the covenant we have with each other. So, in my point number three, I say, I become us. I, the son of the king, draw you into this fellowship, this koinonia, and, and, it's become, and, and we become we. And, and it, let me close with a sharing of an old song. The power, we call it the power of the one another's. I checked again. There are about 50 one another's in the Bible. Let me mention a few. And then you'll understand what I'm talking about. John 13, 34, love one another. That commandment is giving, given 16 times in the New Testament. Build up one another, Romans 14, 19. Build up one another. Care for one another, 1 Corinthians 12, 25. Forgive one another, Ephesians 4, verse 2 and 32. Submit to one another, Ephesians 5, 21. Look to the interests of one another. Get, get involved in one another's life. Philipp, Philippians 2 verse 4. Pray for one another. James 5 16. And, 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 and in this process, I become us. Me become we. And so this is the plan of our cell groups. It's taking, taking a, 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 a church like Agape dividing it into smaller groups and actually making our church bigger. You come to a church meeting on a Sunday. You can worship and you can enjoy some word ministry and maybe even some spirit ministry. But there's something that is left untouched. And that will happen in the smaller group. And so smaller is bigger. I invite you with my whole heart, become part of this. We have lists up at the church building. Pat has lists at home. Please phone us if you're interested in a group. Please call us. We want to include you in the next move that God is doing in Agape. Let's pray together. My Father, thank you for the revelation, the clear revelation of your word. Thank you for starting in an old covenant way and teaching us right through to the new covenant that smaller is more effective, smaller is more powerful, smaller is bigger. Lord, I pray for this family. I pray for every person that is watching this program this morning, that in their hearts you will stir something. And if they are in another town, in another city, Lord, stir something in their hearts pertaining to smaller groups to become bigger and more effective in the ministry of Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I bless you as a family. I bless you as a hearer of this word. May the Lord effect 
something in your heart that only he can do in Jesus' name.